What's up guys, welcome to our second test of my Notifier NFW50 Fire Alarm Control Panel. Let's get into it. So starting off with the devices, I have needed up the wiring for the monitoring modules and such. I also have received another monitoring module and I do not know if that, I don't remember if that was in the last one or not. It may have been, oh my god, the transformer in this thing is so stinking loud. But I have three monitoring modules. This one's white and it's the new style. This one's beige and it's the new style. And this one is the old style and it's also beige. Um, I got the one used. And then we have our kind of broken, still kind of works, MP100T thermal and photoelectric detector. Move down, we have two Firelight BG10s, and these are connected to this monitoring module and this monitoring module. Um, and then that monitoring module is used for this key switch here, which will reset the panel when activated, as long as the panel has been acknowledged. If there's an alarm condition, that is. If we move down to our notification appliances, we have my Wheelock WM3T Outdoor Wheelock MT Remote Strobe. This is a really cool and interesting device. It has like 117 candela, I think. Um, do they say on there? Um, I know they have to say it somewhere because I remember reading it. 117 candela, right there. Well, um, I totally forgot that. It's there. Okay, and then for our horn, our audible signaling appliance, we have this. It looks like a standard Wheelock MT, but it's actually the rare and old, I guess you could say older version. I have it upside down as well. It's the Wheelock MT4-1224, and these are pretty common in 120 volts, but they're not exactly common in 1224 volts. And then the 1224 volt strobe, like horn strobe version, is even more rare. So yeah, it's a really cool device. I got it for free with an order from Kyle D'Amato on eBay. And I got some other stuff with it. He threw it in for free. You'll see those in a future video. But there is a little hold up on the system test for a reason. Um, so that's why I'm doing an NFW50 test. Anyway, I think that wraps up all the devices. Okay, so it's time to get into the fun part of the video. I feel like I say that every time. Um, Let's just take a look inside the panel quickly. I set it up right as well, which is nice. Uh, everything's the same. We have the same batteries. Boards are the same. Both NACs are used. The SLC. And then nothing else over here. Pretty simple setup. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and pull the BG-10. And then I don't know why, but pre-signal on this panel sometimes messes up. So... Um, it may give me three seconds pre-signal. It may not give me three seconds pre-signal. I don't know if anyone knows why. But um, I think I'm going to pull the left BG-10 first. So three, two, one. Oh, we got pre-signal. to mention the device is set on slow loop the mt4 is set on slow loop. and then it is coded by the panel to california code let's go ahead and silence it so yeah it's it's a really cool tone it kind of sounds like an alarm from like the uk or something Honestly, it's it's not exactly a common sound, so that's why I like the way, the way it sounds. Because um, you don't really hear that very often. Um, and let's go ahead and re-alarm with our second PG-10. Let's just pull it down. And there we go. And then to reset these, usually it takes forever... But I have this fancy schmancy screwdriver. You just kind of put it in and twist it up. And these BG10s aren't exactly my friend when it comes to resetting on their own. Oh, well, I just broke that BG10, but whatever. Um, gosh, darn it. Open up. 
Okay, so we're back. Uh, the solder kind of popped off the back of this BG-10. So, yeah, that's gonna have to be fixed. But, um, yeah, so that doesn't matter right now. Um, let's go ahead and reset our panel from our key switch. Um, let me get my Simplex A key out. I have way too many keys these days. Um, and then, of course, the LED is out because it's in the 40-50-80. You just take it and you twist it to the side. And it resets the panel. So I'll close that. Turn that back off. All our monitoring modules are active because we activated them. Um, and I'll see you guys once the panel has initialized. Okay, so the panel is initialized, and I think we are going to test our NP100T with a uh, blow dryer today. So we're going to test the heat sensor on it. So when you're using a blow dryer, make sure it's in the low setting and it's about a foot away from the device so you don't damage it or melt the plastic. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So you just turn it on and then hold it about a foot away from it. And the thermal sensors, I believe the little thing right there. Um, that little orange thing, these are the thermal sensors. So, and then we have uh, pre alarm or pre signal or no, what the uh, Verification alarm. Um, so it has to. And then, uh, so we had no pre-signal at that time, but we had verification, which is when the detector has to feel the heat or smoke for a little bit instead of just immediately once it senses it activating it. It has to read it for quite a little bit, and then it'll activate the panel. So we see we have alarm, smoke photo. There's no other events in the panel at the moment. Um, if I scroll, well, there is a silence for NAC1, um, but... That's not like a major event. Uh, most panels, uh, like other brands, don't actually show that the NACs have been silenced. That's something cool about this panel and other Firelight and Notifier panels in the series. So let's just go ahead and reset this time from the panel. And um, I think that wraps up the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.